Uh, <clears throat> um, problem four is, uh, I'll give you a little bit of a background on this. I, vi I was uh, uh, um, visiting in the Netherlands in uh, 1973 uh, and went to... Uh, went to Dijkstra's home at that time and he was really excited about something that he said was the greatest uh, scientific discovery of his life. He'd been working on a problem for, for a long time and he finally had the answer and, and uh, he was uh, bubbling over with enthusiasm to tell me this, this method of his where he described a way of getting, which is essentially the thing in, the, in, um, in problem four, probably the first of the, the end state solution. Uh, to problem four, where he was, he wanted to, to have, uh, he, uh, when you have distributed control, uh, lots of machine, all machines independent, they still wanted to do a, uh, be able to, to uh, be able to do things like uh, um, critical sections uh, where, where the, the machines would, would know that the other machines were not in a bad state, um, so that, we, that, that you could, you could, Machine could touch some global resource, even though it only had access to its local neighbor, the states of its of its neighbors. And the simplest case of this was when he put all the machines in, into a, a a ring with uh, with uh, everybody having two neighbors. And uh, he 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 wondered whether or not it would be possible to have have a um, a uh, mechanism so that even even when errors are occurred, or if you start out with an arbitrary initial condition, that these uh, machines will all come to a a uh, stable or s uh, synchronized state when they when they know um, that it's safe to to do to, uh, to use it and um, well I was working on quite other things so I didn't pay much attention to what he said except I, I remember his enthusiasm and that he, he described the solution to me and it all these parallel things always blew my mind I could never really understand I'm a very sequential person myself um, and uh, then anyway he um, he published it um, uh, the following year, after ha find, after finding some more improved solutions, uh, apparently in the next two months after after I saw him, um, and uh, and he published without proof the, these uh, these methods, and um, then there were a few other papers afterwards. But um, um, I'm 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 sort of I was sort of surprised that um, that it didn't. Uh, that, that I didn't st uh, sort of see more waves being made by this, where you know, like it would get into our, if, if it was really Dijkstra's greatest discovery, why didn't why didn't our course descriptions in in, in our catalog say you know, you know Dijkstra's uh, synchronizing method or something the way we talk about uh, other things by by name that are that are famous. Uh, so so uh, I guess the 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 um, the idea um, didn't uh, become extremely. Uh, uh, well known um, for some reason, um, uh, although uh, judging from his uh, his enthusiasm at the time, I, you know, I was I was expecting it to be more. Well, I was reminded of this uh, last fall when I was reading his uh, sort of an autobiographical account of uh, of his uh, uh, of what's happened to him during the, the last. Uh, uh, ten years or so, uh, I guess, starting mostly in the 70s. It's, you know, he has this book uh, called "Selected Writings in Computer Science" that that uh, um, was published a couple of years ago, and um, uh, like all of his books, it doesn't have an index, and so so I had to read the whole thing in order to find out what he said about me in it. You know, uh, 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 and uh, uh, well. Uh, and it's really uh, uh, it's it's well it's a it's a fascinating book because it includes a lot of trip reports where you go around the world and say, and and tell about the awful things that happen. Uh, he's uh, uh, has very refined tastes and uh, is not afraid to say when 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 something disturbs him. And so it's uh, it's uh, it's fun to read those those gossipy sections too. And that's especially why I wanted to see. <laughs> Well, what he said about me. Uh, <laughs> uh, so, you know, like he tells about the time he visited my house and and uh, he, he said he woke up at four o'clock in the morning. I hope it wasn't because the bed was uncomfortable or something like that. But he, anyway, so now um, 
in there uh, he he re reprints this uh, this this paper and some and the, and the predecessor paper that he had written uh, about the time that I first saw him when he had this you know enthusiasm about it and it reminded me of this thing and and I thought okay let me let me take a look at it because if, if it's that interesting we ought to be able to ask uh, maybe even a new question about this uh, about it and uh, so I started out and made up a problem four which I thought was a, a new question and and uh, was to was to say uh, um, uh, can we can we decrease the number of states in in Dijkstra's best solution from three to two? And uh, I I discussed this with Ramsey as we were preparing for this uh, uh, for uh, uh, you know the week before class started. And um, a day later, Ramsey comes back to me and says, "No, you can't do it with uh, with two states." Um, and uh, meanwhile, I had also uh, uh, noticed that I, when I thought of this problem, I had made a note to myself, look at science citation index before assigning this problem. Uh, in other words, uh, there's, uh, do, do people know about science citation index in the library? There's this, uh, this way of referring uh, to, to paper, every paper that refers to another paper, you can trace the, the, the citations in backwards order. So if, if you, you, know, you want to say who, who referred to Dijkstra's paper in 1974, I can find out everybody who's done so. It's, since then, uh, uh, of course, the index is is always a year behind or something. But but uh, you can go back and find out who's uh, who referred to who instead of going the other forward direction is easy. But the backward direction, you need this science citation index, which is uh, uh, an extremely important uh, uh, research tool for finding out uh, um, uh, what else is known about a, a, uh, a problem. For example, if if you guys. Uh, you know, find a paper of Gimple that that re refers to a heuristic. You would be able to use Science Citation Index to find out if anybody else has has uh, analyzed that heuristic or something like that. For example, now um, and uh, and there, and I saw lots of references to to his paper. Well, maybe a dozen, uh, but they, none of them uh, addressed the question of uh, minimum state. Except this. Except all of a sudden I. Um, I had one more to check, and that, and that, that, and that last one was uh, actually uh, 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 relevant to the problem that I, as I had originally stated it, um, a man named uh, Maurice Sch Sch Schwente, um did his PhD thesis at Grenoble in 1981, um, uh, trying. Uh, Relating to this problem and, tr and and showing that you needed at least three states uh, uh, to have a to have all the conditions that Dijkstra wanted, um, and uh, so that uh, uh, that meant that the problem that I had originally planned to give here was 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 this, you know is there a two state sol solution was uh, was already was already solved, um, and so in the middle of the night I said okay. Let's generalize it so that each machine can have a different number of states, and uh, the states. That, so your your neighboring machine might have. You know how many states he has, but it might not be the same as you. Um, then what can we say about the the minimum number of states of the whole system, which is the product of the numbers of states in each individual machine? And that seems to be an interesting problem that still hasn't been solved. And so so that's problem four now, uh, trying to find out the the, the optimum. Um, uh, is, uh, in, in, in this sense, uh, number of states. Now, the reason that I, I like, the, I mean, I, the one, one thing I wanted to ask a question that would that would lead us to to get some intuition into this area of parallel uh, of parallel uh, simultaneous operation. Um, and uh, uh, so, let's take a look at the problem as it actually. Hmm, does anybody have a copy of the exact problem? Okay, so now we've got states. Uh, we, so, we, so we've got uh, a, a cyclic arrangement of processors, um, and um, so you've got p zero, p one, p n minus one, and we're going to be interested in um, uh, n large, uh, lim limiting values as n is large. If we can't get exact values for all n. Um, uh, if we can get exact values for all n, that would be nice. But but limiting values as n as large as 
one of the ways that we can simplify the problem if, it, if the exact values turn out to be too, too complicated. Um, and, and now, uh, well, they're, they're arranged in a ring, but we'll actually uh, linearize it and um, just imagine wraparound. So we, so, so we, we can write the states down um, in, a, in, in a row. And uh, uh, the, uh, 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 you say that that's a configuration. And uh, now, now we've got one thing that, that I, I, I made that simplifies the problem a little bit more than the real life situation and if we solve the and and um, if i if i if, i think it's uh, useful to uh, to deal with a simplified problem um, uh, uh, because if you can't solve the simplified one you can't solve the more complicated one probably but there's a simplification to, with respect to the real situation in that i'm i'm assuming that, that there's a there's a master clock that governs all of these things so that from state to state uh, we have a certain, you know, at time zero we might have this configuration. At time one we have another configuration that follows from it. But in practice, uh, the, these machines might each have their own clock, and and one might be reading the states of his neighbors, um, uh, 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 but before he actually absorbs the the fact that what his neighbor's state is, uh, that state might already have changed because the clock rates are different. Um, so I'm assuming a simplified version of the thing, but a lot of the ideas will will generalize to the to the more complicated case. Still, let's uh, for the purpose of this problem, let's not uh, uh, go out of our way to make it too complicated. First, let's try to solve a simpler case where where we've got a where we've got the same clock time. So what happens is that each of these um, at at each clock time, we're go these are going to change to another configuration. Um, and um, let's see how does it work. P j prime is 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 a is a function depending on j of the um, of the uh, neighbors and the and the state of the of the machine. So each machine has a state and is and it knows the states of its neighbors um, at at uh, time t. That time t plus one. Um, um, uh, we we uh, have a situation like this where each one goes um, as some function of the preceding one. Now, um, uh, is it, the function is the same at, on each, uh, F sub on each J. transition? Yeah, F sub J stays the same. Yeah. So F sub J depends only on J but not on, on the time. Yeah. Now the um, uh, uh, the, 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 we say that time actually has passed if at least one of the p's p j primes is different from p j. If all if if this is just an identity transformation, uh, uh, we just ignore it as as uh, as saying that uh, you know time hasn't uh, maybe the uh, electronic clock has ticked, but the actual uh, 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 virtual clock hasn't ticked. So we also assume that we're only interested in cases that at least one of the at least one of the piece has changed. Um, is FJ supposed to be single valued or FJ is single valued, yes. So really this if it doesn't Wait a minute. Change, uh, did I say that? I mean that there, there's a case of F J, F being multiple valued but I but, but I, I, it's a function it's a it's a single value in this case. You could generalize the problem to to a non-deterministic uh, uh, case where there were guards. You know, <laughs> but, uh, uh, you'd have two two different w ways to. But I think it, let's let's stick with the deterministic case for each one. But so if it doesn't change, then it, the function doesn't change and it's single valued. And it, and after one iteration, it doesn't change. In time it will stay there at the state. Yeah. Say that again. If it, if, it, if, yep. it sticks, yep. if it sticks for one transition, oh, I'm it sorry. will stick forever. Um, for some j and pj prime equals pj for other j. Okay, this is for j in, in S, and this is for j in not in S. So some of them will will move, and others won't. Um, 
this. He's saying it's not. I, 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 I choose a subset of the. OK, so 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 the idea is that it's not that that you that you uh, um, don't have to move if you can. OK, let's see. First of all, what does it mean to move? There's if 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 if. Uh, if if f uh, at, at particular values of these states, if f of, of, of j of pj is different from pj, then we say that the, that processor j is able to move. But if, if but there but for many of the states, f j of pj will be equal to to pj, and then and then and then, right. we, then we say it's blocked. Okay, so so processes are blocked if if they if they don't have have a state where where the neighbors are. There, there can be certain cases where where um, um, we have allowed uh, to 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 move, but, but a lot of times F J P J will be just P J. Now, what the, so the actual rule is that says if if there are k processors more than zero able to move, then we take any sub then any subset of the moves can can be made at the next time at the at the next time. Um, uh, so. Um, uh, so so they don't have to move. So so suppose that we so suppose processor J is in a situation where it, where it can move. That means that PJ mind, that this function is is not equal to to PJ. Well, in that case, um, we still don't have to we don't have to include it in the set of processors that move. So let's take a I suppose we can take an example. Um, so it can decide the next time that it should move. It yeah, should right. It, yeah, it doesn't have to move. It doesn't have to move if it doesn't want to. If anybody can pass. So, 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 it, yeah. So actually, uh, you have your choice of of um, moving or not. And the S is dependent on the time. S depends on time. Yeah. So, or let's just say that, or P J. You got your choice. And, and at least one of them does move um, uh, if time passes. Okay. Well, now, now the, the conditions that we we want to make are that there is at least one processor can move. That there's no. We, we set up these functions in such a way that uh, that that no matter what, there's a way to move. No matter what configuration, uh, no matter what configuration we have. Um, Uh, so that the, we'll never get to a situation that's t that just dies and, no, and everybody's blocked. Uh, that's um, then there's another case. Um, uh, the, the, so that's the first condition. The second condition is that uh, uh, that that, that um, in so-called good configurations, at most one processor can move. Uh, at, in other words, since there's at least one processor can move always, uh, then in the good configurations, exactly one processor uh, can move. So, so uh, uh, there will be a, also a definition of configurations that are that are that are good, um, and and we're going to decide, uh, you know, have some criterion of goodness. Um, but uh, that uh, that's an external thing on the con uh, which is also saying that the system is in a good situation. The whole the whole system is is in a synchronized state. If if we have a good configuration, so when it's a synchronized state, then the um, uh, um, then it, uh, then one processor is able to move, and uh, uh, this will m mean then that uh, if 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 the, that processor is doing something to a global resource, it won't m none of the other processors will will uh, will interfere with it uh, by by trying to change the. You know, so you could you could uh, be setting a global variable or something, and nobody and knowing that nobody else is is uh, is touching it at this moment because you're the only one that's able to move. And then then after you do move, then uh, somebody else gets a chance to move. Uh, the third property is that each move from a good configuration leads to another good configuration, and so uh, uh, you can't get out of a good situation. Once it's good, it's always good. Um, uh, unless some some uh, malfunction occurs uh, where where the si some system goes down or something like that, and then then we have then we want to get back into into good configurations again, and so that's problem f property um, four. Um, 
that says that no sequence of moods takes a bad configuration into itself. Uh, so, um, <clears throat> so you consider all the configurations, all the possible configurations, P0 to Pn minus 1, all those possible combinations of states. Uh, there are good ones, and the other ones are called bad. If you, if you have a bad one, um, and then you, you, you move from the bad one um, over a, a sequence of moves, you'll never get back to the original bad one again. This means that sooner or later you've got to get to a good one. Because if you, if, uh, you know, there's only finitely many bad ones. Uh, so you're going to have to keep coming, you know, going through until finally you get to a good one. Once you get to a good one, then you stay good for that time on. So there will be some cycle of good, of good ones that goes on. And uh, that the cycle at the end, um, the last property uh, that I meant that I that I have on here, is um, it says that any cycle of moves, which would then be a cycle of good configurations, uh, it includes a move by each processor. It means that you can't have a cycle where only processors one and two get to move, and processors three and four are starving and never get to move. So so we we also have this that that. Uh, uh, so, so the five properties I can re I'll write them up on the board sometime. But that, the, but uh, that's. Uh, 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 I want to introduce the problem today, and then, uh, and then uh, get uh, into uh, discussion of uh, trying to, to, to well, some, some more deeper analysis um, uh, next week. Uh, so first of all, let's just look at Dijkstra's first solution, and. Um, Let's see. Um, so here he had it only depending on on uh, the left neighbor and not on the right. Um, and and and, all, and in all cases he has um, the same function except there's a, there's one distinguished uh, there's one distinguished uh, machine in the in the in the uh, in the ring uh, that's um, that has a more complicated um, state. So f zero of of x, y, and z um, is really independent of z. So is f, and this is if um, uh, if x equals y. Well, let me write it uh, this way. Um, y plus one if x equals y, and y if x is unequal to y. So if your left neighbor has the same state as you do, then advance your state by one. Otherwise, stay in the same state. This is your this is your own state. This is your left neighbor. This is your right neighbor. And the other guys um, it's always equal to x. This is for i greater than zero. So all the other all the other processors um, either if if they if they decide to move at all. They just um, copy the state of their of their left neighbor. Okay. Now um, let's take a look at what this what this does. Um, uh, we got uh, uh, by the way uh, we got to say what y plus one means. Um, that's modulo m. So there's m states and. Uh, and so this subscript y plus one would go from m minus one to zero. The states of, you know go from zero to m minus one. And similarly, in the, in my formula here, when I said j minus one and j plus one, I was taking it modulo n, modulo, you know, wrap around, wrapping around. Um, in, uh, so whenever these things get out of range, we just uh, uh, so there's n processors here. Um, with this with this function, so take an example where um, uh, m. By the way, m is greater than or equal to n, and n is at least two. Otherwise, it's, we have only one processor. So, so we have. Um, uh, let's consider the case where m is um, is. Uh, oh, why not take m equals four and n equals three? Because because um, uh, you can take you can have an equal, but let's take the case that, that we got different numbers so that we can see that they're not exactly forced to be equal. So that so we might start out with a with a with a configuration that we got three processors. 
So we might start out with a configuration that says, uh, uh, well, what's a good random starting point? Three, one, three, one, four, except my states are zero to three. So four maps into zero, okay, right, for pi. Okay, now, three, one, zero. Okay, now, who, now who's able to move in this case? Well, is pro processor zero able to move? Let's see if anybody can follow. Dimitri, no. why not? No. Because the previous processor. Yeah, pr processor one is able to move only when uh, when x is um, uh, equal to y. That means that its because state is the same as processor two. Processor zero, I'm sorry. Processor zero, th this 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 the left hand guy is going to change only when when it's equal to the one on the right. All right, but the other two processors can move. Uh, this one, this one can change to a three. The zero can change to a one. All right. Uh, so one of the things that we that they could do is both change. For example, they could go like that, or it could go to three three zero, or it could go to three one one. Those are the three possible successors of this configuration. It must be a bad configuration because in every good configuration there's supposed to be only one uh, processor can move. And um, this it's only one processor can move, it can have only one success successing success uh, thing. Okay, now um, uh, well we choose one of these lines. In the case three three one, um, this second processor can't move anymore because now it, you know, x equals y, so it doesn't do anything. The third processor, the first processor, the zeroth processor, <laughs> I don't know, to call these guys zero, the zero, the left, the middle, and the right. So the, le the left processor still can't move because it can only move when, when its state equals the one on the far right. Uh, the middle processor can't move, so this one has a forced uh, successor, three, three, three. Uh, this case is uh, same th same deal. 333. Three, three. In this case, um, this the um, the the right guy can't move, uh, and the middle guy can move to 331, which takes us into a case that we that we already have handled. So in all, so so pretty soon we're going to get down to 333 three, three here. Now, first left hand processor can move, and that goes to Zero three three. Now, um, only the second processor can move. It's got to go to zero zero three. Only the third processor can move. It's, it's got to go to zero zero zero. Then we go one zero zero, one one zero, and so on. I think you see that we're now in a cycle of good configurations where the good configurations are. Are, de are defined to be the ones that you get where uh, you start um, with um, um, some some configuration of the form p p p p and then p plus one p plus one at most two state values and they differ by I'm sorry p minus one. Most two state values, and they differ by by one in that direction. Those are the, these are the good configurations. In this in this uh, situation, and and um, the uh, um, the the condition that's hardest to verify um, always, it seems to me, is that it w when you've got a solution of the problem, is that uh, is the condition for that no sequence of moves will take a bad configuration into itself. That is, uh, any any starting configuration whatsoever is is bound to lead uh, in a finite number of moves into a good configuration. Those aren't all the good configurations, are they? Those are, are, are that we could define those to be the good configurations, I believe. Yeah, why do you ask? Well, why wouldn't something say just where you have any number of P's and then any number of anything else, Q's or something? Why wouldn't that be good? It seems to satisfy everything. Um, 
you could you could also you could also define um, you could also classes. define a larger class of good configurations than than the smallest possible class. There's, it's not a unique definition, but this but these are are, are definitely necessary. Now, in order the pro property the one so what what are the good configurations have saying that if you you never go from a a, a non good into into itself um, and uh, so. Um, if we add to the good configurations, that just makes that property easier to satisfy. And so, so uh, that so you can always add more configurations to that one. Each move from a good leads to another good, um, and so uh, this means that you you, you uh, uh, can only use predecessors of good configurations um, as being good. Um, is that right? And then, um, uh, and then uh, the other c characteristic is that it, it, it exactly one processor uh, can move. Let's see. What do I have a note here? Um, uh, so. Uh, there, yeah, I, I um, had a note to myself about that same thing. So, for, if you have, for example, a state like um, three three one, you might call, call that good, even though it's e even though it's um, uh, not um, in a, in a cycle. So, so Dijkstra in his original paper had a condition that that said that all the good all the good configurations must uh, be obtainable from all the other good configurations. Uh, that you could, you know, it's sort of a, uh, uh, it's cycle including them all. But that's not really a, uh, an important uh, practical criterion. It's better to weaken it this way. So we could, we could also allow something like 331 and call it good if we wanted to, saying that, um, that there were just two values or something like that. Because then we could guarantee that only one processor could move and we still would take good into good. Um, but uh, we're also generalizing Dijkstra's in that we, m we might have two cycles of good. Of, of good things, as long as as long as every processor can move in in, in, in each cycle, um, uh, we don't have to be able to get from one cycle into the other cycle. Uh, in practice, that's that's the kind of thing that's that's uh, that's needed. Not the the actual getting from one from any good configuration to any other that he had in his original paper isn't uh, isn't important. I don't think. Okay, now <clears throat> um, let's try. Um, Two instead of two states instead of four states, and see what happens. So, in the in the two-state case, we might get um, um, well. We certainly have the same. We have a cycle of good configurations, uh, just just as before. So one 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 will be forced to go into zero one one, which will be forced to go into zero zero one, which will be forced to go into Zero zero zero, and that is forced to go into one zero zero, one one zero, and then up to there again. Uh, the two that are left out, zero one zero, and one zero one. Now zero one zero, what can we do from that? Um, uh, this guy can move to. This can go to one one zero. Uh, or this guy can go. It can go to zero zero zero, or it can go to zero one one. That's if you make single moves, right? Excuse me. That's all the single moves. That's the single make. moves. Ah, good point. And then we got so there should be seven moves all together, because <laughs> all three guys can move. So. Uh, we could also do the first two moves. That would be one zero zero. Uh, we could do the first. Uh, well, in fact, we can take it into anything else <laughs> except right. itself, right? Because all three of them can move, and it's only two states. Right? So, so one of the things they can go into is one zero one, for example, <laughs> um, which is the other guy, and one zero one can go back into zero one zero. And so there we have a. a uh, an example of a bad configuration going into itself. So 
So it, it doesn't work uh, when m is, is less than n. If you, if you allow only one processor to move at each step, however, it does work when m equals n minus 1, I think, in general. If you, if you allow, if you say that, um, you know, that only one, uh, uh, you know, you, you look at a configuration, you say which processors can move, and, uh, and then you, uh, you say at least one can always move, but then you choose one. And only and, and only move one that can move. Then um, uh, uh, we would be okay. But you should make the restrictions process be able to decide load by just looking at its neighbors whether it should move. That's right. So so here so so there's no way for us to to I mean unless somebody gets gets a uh, gets a signal uh, saying uh, uh, now uh, uh, not only can you move but nobody else has. Has uh, has gotten the signal. Yeah, uh, uh, that's uh, uh, so that would need an extra kind of synchronization, uh, which uh, would, which would solve the problem anyway. Yeah, right. right. So so well, that so that begs the, the whole problem we're trying to solve. So yeah. So the idea of, of allowing any subset of the people to move to move is really is really inherent in, in you know in the in the applications of this. Uh, so so although it still makes a mathematical uh, problem of saying only one can move. Um, it's not uh, it's not the right mathematical problem for for distributed stability consideration. Okay, so so uh, there was uh, there are seven successors of you know if k people can move. You got two to the k minus one uh, successors. Uh, uh, any subset of the any non-empty subset of the, of the ones that can move doing it. Uh, okay, so that. Uh, it uh, shows the the original solution that Dijkstra had, and uh, um, now um, it's interesting. I, I don't want to go through now the construction of a proof that in general it works. That is, if take you no no bad configuration will ever go back into itself. Um, uh, it's uh, it's interesting to work it out yourself, and so I don't want to take that pleasure away from you. Everybody do it, you know, by yourself in a in a in a, in a quiet room. Um, uh, the main idea is probably that if you start out, so, you know, you have to think big. Think of a of a of a, of a million uh, uh, processors and being in uh, um, a arbitrary um, uh, initial initial condition, and we want to eventually get to the point where where at, there's a at on, there's only two different state values um, there and. Uh, 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 it's uh, um, you, mi you might try it also to see if you could solve the problem with a, with a, with the same function without a, without one being designated different from the other. And I think uh, uh, there you, you you find that that there's no way to do it. Uh, uh, at least if um, if you, uh, let me see, there's something about. There, there's something about that you need you need to, to designate one of the processors different from the other because otherwise you, you know, let's see something about prime numbers if there if there's a if there's a, like if if it's not a prime suppose you have a million things in the ring then um, then I think any there's there's some argument that says that uh, that a cyclic shift of a of a config of a of a sequence of moves will have to always be a, another valid sequence of moves, and this will show that you can't solve all the conditions. I forget the argument, but uh, but uh, in the general case, tr um, uh, first try to prove that in a finite number of moves you you always get to a good configuration with Dijkstra's construction, and then once you've done that, try to find the worst case. What's the how, how finite is it? I mean, is it uh, is it um, uh, n cubed? Is it two to the n? Is it uh, 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 you know, square root of n, log n, ten? What's the what's the longest path from a bad configuration to a good one? And you get to define good ones uh, either in this way, or you could extend them, as uh, Rich suggested. To uh, just p and q, no, two different uh, uh, any configuration that has two different values. But this is a, this this is a uh, I think um, a minimum set of, of good of good values that that could be done. 
Okay. Now the um, uh, similarly, then he has a, a construction with three states only, so that you have you can have n processors for any number of n, and he but he has only three states: um, zero, one, and two. And uh, the uh, um, proof was left to the reader to show that it always it always uh, gets into a good cycle in his three-state case. Now, I've worked that out in the notes. I don't want to talk about that now. I want to consider, I think, the rest of today, um, if we can't prove that, you, that there's, it's impossible to do a two-state solution to this with, with arbitrarily large pro number of processors. So um, uh, uh, we want to, want to examine the, the two, the, the, set, the, the case of uh, try to define a, set, uh, a, a state transition function um, that uh, is going to uh, uh, that that uh, that has only two states per processor. This would be really nice if it were possible. Um, so, so we're going to try to to find another construction besides the one Dyson. And by showing that a two-state solution can't exist, this will help motivate why he he come up with a three-state solution. <laughs> Now, um, oh, I erased that. Uh, we we could uh, uh, probably come up with a two-state solution with it, with only three processors. Uh, so, so I guess that would be a, a a useful starting point. So we have. So, so let's consider first of all, um, uh, two states and three processors and see if it's possible to solve the condition, uh, his conditions there. And um, so I, I better list the conditions. Um, I, I'll put them on this board. The first condition was um, at least one processor can move. from any configuration. Um, at most, one processor can move in a good configuration. Third, good always leads to good. Uh, I don't know how to capitalize it, but I don't. On a distinction, then bad never leads to itself in any in any um, um, in any finite sequence of moves. Uh, one or more moves from a bad will never take back to this to the to itself. And the last one. Is any cycle of good moves, any cycle of moves includes a move by each processor. Those are the five conditions. And we'd like to find a, set, a function f now that uh, 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 or different different f for each uh, for each processor perhaps um, that will that will um, uh, satisfy these conditions and each f is a function of uh, of three you know, of, of all three processors. Uh, your left neighbor and you and your right neighbor turn out to be every everything, right? Okay, ideas. Yeah, well, it's just a, it's a great you can use a great code from. Uh, okay. Uh, so Sorry. use a, you know, in other words, some some kind of a code that takes some kind of a Hamiltonian path among all the three states where everything changes, where, where that, uh, exactly one bit changes. Uh, that's what a gray code is. Uh, only one bit changes when you when you go to a successor. So. Gray is named after Frank Gray, who <laughs> did this in the 40s. Okay, so this is zero 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 one. People know about gray codes. What you do is you you just um, um, take the uh, 
um, you take the numbers in binary and uh, and replace everything by the number of odd bits to the right or something like that. It's a well, so zero one one uh, zero one zero, and then we complement the 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 left bit, and then that one sits, and we repeat the the, the process. Uh, so that's one zero one one one. One zero zero one one one, and we make the arrows go this way. So all the eight configurations are declared to be good, and uh, uh, there is exactly one move defined in every situation. So we just let this chart define the function, uh, namely f. Uh, um, uh, of the, if you look at the the thing from each local point of view, it knows the whole state of the system because you know yourself and your two neighbors. And uh, then um, certainly, since there's no bad ones, it could, uh, problem four is is obvious. Problem five is obvious because there's only one cycle, and everything is, uh, is 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 clear. Okay. Well, that was too easy. Go to four processors. Okay, now in four processors, you, each one only knows um, three of the bits of the state. Each processor only knows its, its own state and the, the states of the two neighbors. So, ideas? You said this couldn't be done, didn't you? No, I didn't. <laughs> I said for for sufficiently large n, it could that it couldn't be done. But uh, but even though e even so, you're trying to uh, uh, well, I don't know. Uh, we can we can we can try and then see if it fails. We can try something and see if it fails. And so so um, uh, let's for example suppose we start out in state zero 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 zero. Um, in, in a sense, this can be done without loss of generality because we could probably map uh, everybody's uh, uh, every processor could change its state. It, it <laughs> renumber all the states. Yeah, renumber all the states and transform the functions accordingly. Right. So we can we we have a starting point anyway. You know? So zero zero zero, we can decide where it's what it's going to go into. <laughs> uh, but we so, we could also decide that it's good because something somebody's yeah, got to be good. Starting out in but so so suppose that, suppose that there's a good state. I mean, a good configuration. There's got to be one good configuration, right? If it weren't zero 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 zero, then we could we could renumber all everybody's states where the states you know if the state if if they they like to call it one, we could call it zero, and just change the 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 the, func the, the neighbor's function where the where the, the neighbor was reading the the thing the other way. So there's a sort of an arbitrary naming. That we can do, so we can say if that, that that zero 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 is a good configuration. You can also say one zero 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 is your next good configuration. Okay, why is that? Well, because somebody has to be able to move. In a good configuration, um, exactly one processor is able to move, and so it might as well, by by cyclic symmetry in our ring, it might as well be the first one. So you can take this into this guy, for example. As uh, uh, as a as a thing. So now, what does this tell us about the functions? Um, f o f. Um, well, we got. We, let me see. I better. I better um, plan ahead here. So it's zero 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 goes into one zero zero zero, and now I've got four functions. Um, uh, one for each processor, um, and. Uh, F zero, the first the function for the left processor. Uh, F zero takes uh, zero 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 into one. Now it could go to one one zero zero uh, or one zero zero one. Excuse me. I I, I want to write down the the, the uh, partial information that I have about the functions first. I want to uh, I want to to say what. Uh, um, so, for, so the assumption, first of all, that f zero, 
can, can, that, that, that this can go into this says that the first processor can move. But we also assumed, because it was good, that the second processor could not move. So that says that F1 of 0, 0, 0 is 0, because otherwise it could move. And similarly on these guys. Okay, so now in this in this next set, in this next situation, then um, we're looking at f zero of, um, of of zero one zero is involved, f one of one zero zero is involved, f two is still sitting at zero zero zero, and f three we're looking at zero zero one, um, and so we know that pr that uh, processor two can't move. Uh, so either processor one or processor three or processor zero. Oh, yes, one of those other three can move. Okay, so now in this in this next set, in this next situation, then um, we're looking at f zero of um, of of zero one zero is involved, f one of one zero zero is involved, f two is still sitting at zero zero zero, and f three we're looking at zero zero one. Um, and so we know that pr that uh, processor two can't move. Uh, so either processor one or processor three or processor zero. Oh, yes, one of those other three can move. Processor zero. Can uh, okay. Zero. Now wait a minute. I got to take turns here. <coughs> who hasn't who hasn't spoken yet? To, to uh, Mike. Okay. Well, zero can't move because that would take you back to where you just came from, and that's too short a cycle. Zero can't move because that would take us back. In other words, if if this went back to zero, then we would be. Um, it wouldn't be too interesting, and it would violate condition five. But, uh, but condition five would, you know, otherwise, uh, you know, if, if we didn't have condition five, I think that's the only thing that's violated. But so we don't want well, that. Oh, so, so, so in fact, zero one zero has to go into one. one. All right. So processor zero can't move. Processor is between one and three now. It doesn't matter. Uh, oh, what did you say? Yeah. It, do, it doesn't matter right. which one of those you yeah. decide to move. Right. I was waiting for Roger to say this. Why doesn't it matter? Because it's symmetric. It's symmetric. So we haven't used all the symmetry of a ring. Ring, has yeah. it, uh, ring is not only symmetric about uh, cyclic fermentation, like but also about right. reflections. Mm -hmm. And so, um, so our, 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 uh, our symmetry is not, but now we've exhausted the symmetry. <laughs> we have eight symmetries of a, four, of a, of a ring of four elements. Uh, that, that there are ways to put the ring back on itself without using it. But we, we can assume that it's, this one can move and this one can't, let's say. So that means that this guy is going to go into one and this guy is going to go into zero. Okay. So then he moves. Okay. Now let's take a look at the next situation then. Now we're sitting at uh, zero one one um, for for the zeroth processor for processor one 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 zero for processor two we start now got a new situation one zero zero processor three is zero zero one one still so processor three is still blocked. <coughs> And so at, at, le at most one of those, you know, exactly one of those three um, uh, is going to move now. Well, again, it can't, one can't, again, it can't be processor one. It can't be the, the processor zero or processor one. one. Yeah, this guy, this guy, once you've moved, you, you better not move twice in a row because you're going to just get back to the same same loop. Okay, so this has to be fixed. Okay, so, so every time you do move, 
uh, that's a condition that we could, you know, we could we could uh, impose on our function that says that uh, if you move, then the, the the corresponding thing after the moving is a fixed point. Um, um, okay, that'll speed up uh, some of our other calculations. So, uh, uh, all right. So so uh, now we got two choices. Let's look at the uh, let's look at the one in the first one. So suppose pro the first processor um, uh, goes back to zero here. So then we get zero one zero zero. That won't do because with all the other things you've done, you'll have to move back to one of the previous ones. Yeah. Let's see if the, let's see if we know what's going to happen after zero one zero zero. Um, then um, uh, we got a zero zero. Let's see who can move. Three and four can't move. Two and three. Yes, two, 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 yeah, two and three can't move. Is it right? Two. We're assuming that two can't move from here, so it can't move from here. And three um, uh, is known that can't move from that. And two. If you move either zero or one from there, you get back to a previous state. Okay, so so uh, uh, so two would have to move uh, because one can't move twice in a row. So two would have to move, and that would get us back to to um, uh, to a previous state. Is that bad to be in a previous state? This state yeah, yes. because, because the other guys haven't moved yeah. yet. Okay, so um, therefore, by backtracking, we had only one other possibility, or as Sherlock Holmes would say, after you rule out all the Things that are impossible, the one left, no matter how improbable, must be correct or something else. <laughs> um, so this one is one, and this one is one. And of course, then we also know that after it moved, it has to it has to stay. So that takes us to one 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 zero by uh, uh, inexorable logic, and. Uh, uh, let's see what's going on now. Um, we're getting more and more things filled in, even though our symmetries are going down. So, so this is one. Oh, sorry, zero one one. We already got it. It's uh, uh, one one one. Um, and um, um, one one zero. One zero one. Okay, now um, a high-level observation strikes me. <laughs> but I, yes, I, symmetry about the center. Uh, well, we've used up our symmetries, but there's something else. Uh, the renaming argument could still be applied, I think. In other words, we could still argue, I think, that that. Um, um, you go very check me on this. Let me try to say, <laughs> say it without mumbling too much. Um, we could, if if we had a, a given our initial configuration not as zero 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 zero, but as x zero x one x two x three, and and uh, for arbitrary x zero x one x two and x three, then our next state, you know, then we would have used x zero. Uh, well, this would have been x three x zero x one here, um, and this would have been x. Um, Instead of zero 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 here, I would have had x zero x one x two. I would have had different different names for these guys here, but still there would have been. It would have said that if I go from start with x zero x one x two x three, I could um, uh, uh, go through. Uh, I could I could rule out the case of first moving one guy, the next, and then moving the first one again. So I'm I'm claiming that since we couldn't. I mean, this, this is a move of zero, one, and we show that you couldn't move zero and then one and then zero. I'm saying that, that that argument could be generalized to say you couldn't move one and then two and then one, because I could renumber, I could rename all the states and use the same kind of argument on their different things. Oh, this is a. Uh, anyway, I. Uh, we would soon find, I believe, that that it can't be one moving again because one. You know, zero moved here, one moved here, 
two moved here. And if one moves again, then we're going to be in a similar situation as we had when we when we ruled out the zero one zero case. So, so, zero so I bet you this has to be this. What? Zero count. So zero is blocked because two just moved and and zero doesn't even know. No, but then three could move. Yeah, three can move after, but not you know. So, but but at the oh. moment, at the moment there's only one there's only one viable continu and that's for three to move. Because if we because we we know that two can't move twice in a row, and I'm also claiming that you can't have a one two one for the same reason we couldn't have a zero one zero. Right. So it's got to be three. And so. Uh, that um, um, where we are uh, now. Um, well, if uh, <coughs> if we can't, uh, okay. The, now the argument is pretty is is the same. This is beginning to loop on itself because it, it, we can't have two three two either. <laughs> same reason we couldn't have zero one zero and one two one, and so two three two. Couldn't be followed by two, three, three, or two. Uh, or, I mean, two, three can't be followed by three or two, so it has to be one or zero. Can't be one because one is is on is one doesn't even know that three has moved. One's neighbors are, are zero and two. So the only thing that can possibly happen here is zero, zero to move. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Zero to move, and uh, this means then that one, one, one is going to take is going to go into zero. And that would go zero one one one, and um, oh well, we we see what's got to happen, um, and this is going to go zero zero one one, uh, zero 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 one, zero 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 zero. Whoops. <coughs> so one will move, two will move, and three will move. I didn't turn the corner fast enough. Um, Okay, so now that's eight of them are covered in this situation, um, and this was sort of forced on us, except uh, for a little bit of symmetry that we used in there. Now, what about the other eight? There are six, there are sixteen configurations in all. What about the other eight? Um, I haven't started. I haven't filled in these functions here, but uh, 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 let's see if we if uh, uh, well. Um, I got to erase this. Got only two minutes to go. So the ones are missing. For example, zero zero one one is missing. No, no, no it's there. Sorry, zero one zero one is missing. Right, zero one zero one is missing. And um, uh, what do we know about it? One zero one. Um, has net. So let's see. Is anybody? One zero one. Close to zero. It's by because which one? Zero. Lower right hand corner. No, there. Okay. So so which guys do we know are blocked here? That one. Zero is blocked. Zero is blocked. Because two neighbors are one, and that's that's occurred before. One is. Is uh. Unknown. There's no situation where that's been surrounded by zeros, is it? So that could move. This could move. And, but this one is blocked. Is that right? So, so um, we could say go from there to zero 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 one, which takes us hmm, into in the, in the first position. The last one has to change. The last one has to change. I'm sorry, but it doesn't have to. Okay, it's got to be able to change. So we better do that. Wait, two isn't blocked. Zero, one, two, and three are all unblocked. You say that this one could, this one was something here. Okay. All right. So, so then we can move into that. Well, um, uh, we don't have time to go through the whole details, but I believe you can take the other eight and arrange them into a cycle, and those two cycles between them do exhaust it, so that for four processors we can do it. Um, and. Uh, uh, on Tuesday, I would like to see a proof that with five you can't. With four, how, how do you I, I, I claim that the other eight will fit into a cycle, a good, a good cycle, right. and everybody will move on that cycle too. 
Right, but if you're in that half, you won't be able to get this out. That still so satisfies that conditions one, two, three, four, and five. No, but if you start in a bad state. There's nothing is bad. Everything is good. Oh. There's always one move from every state. From every configuration, there's, only, there's always one move. But, and, uh, and, and, there's, and everything is in two cycles. So if you start out in one cycle, you always stay in that cycle throughout all history. Um, but uh, it's always good. So if you call this good. cycle good and the other cycle bad... No, I don't. Oh, exactly. I call them both good. You call them both I good. love them both. Oh, okay. <laughs> yes, so I'm, call, very, I'm a very all nice... States. I'm a very friendly call person. All <laughs> all I, I, yeah, that's right. This is the... This, there's no, this, you know, all, all uh, uh, like everybody in this situation. Okay, so see you on uh, on Tuesday. Remember, 14 days left for problem uh, for our art show. When's the imaging going to be working?